Hello there, my name is George Hurst. In this video program, we will show how to make a clock out of a stirrup that's normally used on a saddle that's on a horse. To build this clock, here are some of the products you will need. Number one is the stirrup. This is a deep roper stirrup, which means it's wider in through here and a little stout on both sides. This makes it easier to cover with leather because we'll have more room to do our tooling and decorating. We'll also need some leather. We'll use some six to seven or eight to nine ounce leather for the outside and for the tread which will go over here. And then we'll also need some lighter weight leather, probably three to four or four to four ounce to cover the inside of the stirrup. The leather, of course, you can get from any leather supply store, and most of the other stuff we're going to be used can be purchased at a leather supply store. Everything except the stirrup and the movement. The movement can be purchased at any variety store or arts and crafts store. The first thing we're going to do to start making our cover for the stirrup is to measure the stirrup. And we're going to make templates, one for the outside of the stirrup, one larger for the inside, and you'll see why it's going to be larger late, later in the program, and also one for the tread. So the first thing we need to do is measure the stirrup. In this case, it's two and a half inches wide at the top, and at the widest, it's three and a half inches. And of course, we're going to put one piece on each side. And so it will need to be about 10 inches. So now that we know that size, we can make a template. And this is the template I've made from a piece of cardboard. And I've also made a mark where we'll punch a hole for the bolt to go through. Then we have another part that's going to be on the inside. It will be somewhat wider than the outside. And you'll see why when we get further into the program, why it's wider. Because we got to use it to, de to make provisions for the thickness of the stirrup. And of course then we'll have one for the tread that goes over, as you will see later. I have here the templates I made to do the cutting of the leather. Uh, you'll notice that each one I have marked how thick the leather should be and how many pieces. In this case, this is the lining. We'll have two pieces of four to five ounce. This is the outside pieces, which will go on the outside. We'll have two of those. And they will be six to seven or eight to nine ounce leather. Also notice on two of these, we will have a hole to punch. This is the tread cover. This is also uh, can be six to seven or eight to nine ounce. And we've punched holes that you'll notice we will use to attach it to the stirrup. For the part that holds the clock, there'll be one piece of four to five ounce for the front, another piece of four to five ounce for a lining, and a piece of four to five ounce that will hold that mechanism onto the stirrup. It's now time to cut some leather. I have the template that I'm going to use for the outside parts, and that is of course then being cut from a heavyweight leather. So now I'll carefully place my template, trace around it with a scratch all and we'll do the same thing with all of our parts. Now I will cut it with a straight edge and a sharp knife.
being careful. Go all the way through. Notice I also place the straight edge so that when I'm cutting, I'm cutting away from the part. So if I make a mistake and go out, it's not going to affect the part. It's easier to make several passes with the knife than it is to try to push it all the way through with one pass. And now we can cut the other half. For these outside pieces, you'll notice there are rounded corners on the top. It's easiest to cut those with a shears, as you can see. Just kind of round them off right on the marks that you made when you traced it. That's ready to go. The uh, lining pieces, or the inside pieces, whatever we want to call them, are being cut from three to four ounce or four to five ounce leather. And like we did before, I'll trace the outline with my stretch all. Now, on these, each one will have a hole, so I will mark the center of that hole. And now we can proceed to cut these out just like we did the other parts. You'll notice here I have cut the parts out that will hold the clock. And uh, with these templates that I used. And now it's time to punch some holes in them for the ones that will, where the clock mechanism will pass through, I'll use a number 10. On the back, I will also use a number 10 because the mechanism will pass through both sides. For the part that will hold the pieces that will hold the clock mechanism, I will need to punch four holes. And now with the tread cover, I will punch a series of holes along both edges where it will be stitched together. This is a smaller, about one-eighth inch hole. Now we'll punch these along both edges, here and here. I have cut all the parts and uh, for the linings now I will punch two holes. These will be for the bolt that goes through that carries the mechanism. And now all of our parts are ready. The outside pieces, the tread, and the parts that hold the clock. And now, if we're going to do any tooling and coloring, now is the time to do that.
I have done all my tooling, and here are the parts. And by the way, if you need any help with your tooling, there are other videos on the Alctrax website that will help you with that. So now we can proceed with the assembly. Step one in preparing to do the assembly is to prepare the parts. For the two sides, I'm going to punch some holes for stitching. And uh, the first thing I'll do is use a wing divider and mark a stitch line about one eighth of an inch in from the edge. Of course, let's do this around the three sides. And then with my stitching chisel, I will punch the holes. And I'll do this all the way down both sides. It's time to start the assembly. I'm going to first take the outside parts that we tooled and finished and attach them to the outside of the stirrup. I'm going to first begin by applying contact cement to the outside only at this time. And these parts will go over the edge and down to the center of the bottom. So we will apply cement in that area. And now I will take one of the leather pieces and apply contact cement to the back of it. And after we've got this cement applied, we will wait a few minutes for it to dry until it gets tacky, and then we'll show you how to attach it. We're now ready to cement the inside parts to the stirrup. And the first thing I need to do is dampen them thoroughly, both inside and out. Now, when I say dampen, I mean dampen. I don't mean to soak them until they get soggy. They're thoroughly damp throughout. And we'll put these aside for a few moments. And let them cure. I'm going to start the assembly by attaching the insides to the inside of the stirrup. To do that, I will apply cement, by the way, this is contact cement, to the inside, all the way down to the bottom and across the bottom. And then I will do the same thing to the other side. I'm now applying cement to the leather pieces. By the way, we have allowed them to dry to the point where they are still damp so that the uh, cement will stick. If you do it before, if it's too wet, then the cement will not adhere properly. But this is just right for now. Now after we get this applied, being contact cement, we will allow it to dry until it's tacky before we try to put it onto the stirrup. I have allowed the cement to dry until it's tacky and now we can begin the assembly. I'm going to first take the lining pieces and put them in 
I will very carefully line this hole up with the with the bolt. And then I'll very carefully keep it in the center. And line it as you can see so that we have equal on both sides. And it's adhere firmly to the inside of the stirrup. Now we'll do the other side the same way. We will get the bolt because we need to line up the bolt. Please note I've folded this back so that it doesn't stick to everything else except where I want it. I'll push the bolt through. Line up the hole of the leather. This is a little bit of a challenge, but you'll get it. Now we'll get through the leather and then through the hole on the other side. And now we'll very carefully line this up just like we did the other side and stick it in place. Now you notice it doesn't come all the way together in the bottom. That's not to worry because the other parts will cover it and it will be sitting on its base as well. So now we can take the outside pieces and make sure you get the bolt all the way through. After you get the bolt all the way through, you can attach the nut and now we can apply the other sides, or the outside I should say. Make sure that you have it the same distance on all three sides. And now we will fold it on down to the bottom. We'll do the same thing to the other side. and get it as close as you can on the bottom. Now, now the fun part comes. We need to roll these sides in and attach it to the front. To do that, it's best to roll this back, as you can see, and then roll it in. And stick it. Same thing on the sides. We will roll it until it sticks to the side. This is the beauty of contact cement. You couldn't do this with any other kind of cement. No. I will now use a a bone folder, or in this case, one made of lignum vita, and I will make sure I get a good bond all the way around. This is why we kept the leather damp while we were doing this.
It's also why we kept it damp. I haven't told you that before. So that it will stretch into place. And of course we'll do that to both sides. Notice how I'm rolling that in there so that it gets a good bond down on this inside curve. And like we did on the other side, we'll use the bone folder to finish this. And now we will let this dry and we'll trim it. Please note that uh, in order to make this uh, turn here over the edge and then down and then back out, it, it requires some stretching here. So I have cut some marks in here to make that easier. I am now going through the holes that we pre-punched earlier and through and catching the, the lining piece. So we will now go all the way around and punch through the holes that we punched earlier and then we'll be ready to do our stitching. And now using a sharp knife I'm going to trim the excess of the lining as you can see all the way around. It's now time to start our stitching. I'm going to stitch it in four sections starting at the top center and go down one side to the center of the bottom. So I will pre select a piece of wax linen thread, measure that distance, and then I will do that four times and that's how much thread we will take to do that section. And now as you can see I'm using the two needle st saddle stitching method to stitch the area that we talked about earlier. Now that I have finished uh, with the stitching on the main part of the clock that's on the stirrup, it's time to work on the part that will actually hold the clock works. Uh, I have put some glue on the back of this and now I'll take a piece of three to four or four to five ounce leather and I'll apply cement to that and uh, we'll set that aside and let it dry until it gets tacky and then we will put the two pieces together. The cement has set up to the point now where we can continue. I'll take my piece here, the front, and very carefully place it on the lining. I'll press it down well and for extra I will tap it from the back. And now it's just a matter of trimming this and I'll do it with the shears right around the edge. Get that out of the way.
Now that we have trimmed it, we're going to stitch around here. So I'll once again take my wing dividers and mark the line. And with a thonging chisel, I will punch my holes right on this line. Now that I have trimmed the piece and cut the holes in there, it's time to do the stitching. And I'll do that with the same needles and the same thread that we use to do the main part of the stirrup and we will use four times the distance around for our thread. I've finished stitching the clock holder and now I need to punch three holes, uh, one for the clock movement and two for the part that will hold it to the stirrup. And now we can start working on the edges. We'll have edges on this part, we'll have edges on the tread, and also on the stirrup. So I'm going to take my the proper size edge bevel and bevel around the outside. And we'll do front and back. For the tread, we'll use the same size. We'll do front and back. It's not necessary to do the ends. And now we will do the same thing to the main part. For this, since there are two thicknesses of leather, I will use a little larger edge bevel. And we'll go all the way around. Outside and the inside. Now that we have finished the edge bevel work on all the pieces, it's time to slick the edges. I'm going to do that by first dampening all the edges with water and I say dampen I don't mean drown it just dampen it and then with a piece of canvas we will rub until these edges get smooth it doesn't take a lot not necessary to do it down at the bottom because that will be covered by the tread. So we will do all the exposed edges. edges.
Now we will do the same thing to the tread. It's not necessary to do the ends. And then finally, we will do the holder for the clock. The next step is to apply an edge finish to all of the exposed edges. I'll start first with the stirrup. This is a paint, so be careful when you put it on so you just stay on the edge and don't let it run down on any other parts of the stirrup. Notice I'm using a small dauber because with the smaller one I have more control than I would have with a larger one. Please note that it doesn't take a lot of this to do the job. When I do the other side, I will stand it up so that I don't disturb the the, the chemical on the other side. And uh, now we will also do the, the tread. And finally, we will do what I'm going to call the clock holder. And now we're pretty well ready for the final assembly. What we're going to do now is attach the tread to the stirrup. This is rather easy. We just put it in, turn this over, and fold these two ends back. Now, that's the way that will go. Well, now, using some of the wax thread, same as we used before. And we'll do what I'm going to call a, a, lace, a shoelace up way of doing it. It's easier once you get started. Now that we have finished stitching the tread in place, the only thing left to do is attach the clockworks. Please note that I have already put the clockworks into the, the frame, and now it's just a matter of taking this piece, going over the bolt, and then 
with uh, one of the key posts, we will now hang this through the holes we've already punched. And after we put the clock mechanism in, we have our finished stirrup clock.